Hi everybody, welcome to Saturday Live at the Backyard Bird Center. Today is a requested program from YouTube. I had a, a fan wanted me to talk about the swallows, the master aerialist. A great group of birds uh, here in North America and they are all migrants so we're just getting into the swallow season. They're just starting to return. So I'm not going to go into great detail on, on all the, the swallows, but I am going to give you information on each one of the ones that occur here and then one that occurs out to the west that we don't ever get to see here in Missouri. So the first one, by the way, this is a rough wing swallow. We'll get back to him here in a little bit. But the first one I wanted to start with is the one that a lot of people don't think of as a swallow and that is our largest swallow and that is the purple martin and they, the reason I started with him is because they're the first to return each spring. Uh, the, we've got lots of martin reports, uh, the adults uh, re uh, being reported all over the area now so they're coming in. The average return date on those birds is around March 10th and sure enough we had some sightings right about that time and they're starting to pour in but these are uh, swallows and they're unique in a lot of ways you know they're they're people love them and they're social birds they're colony nesters and what's amazing is in the last 200 years um, they have gone you know from you talk about totally adapting to people you know where you know it anymore you can't hardly find a purple martin nest in an unman made a house or a gourd. These guys uh, used to nest in hollow tree cavities and even in, in cliffs and things like that. Now we, we, they're, they almost totally and solely nest in man-made structures, especially here in the eastern two-thirds of the United States. And people love them. We have lots of very dedicated uh, Purple Martin landlords and they are so fun, so noisy, and they eat lots of insects. They're, all the swallows I'm going to be talking about almost exclusively eat insects. Now a couple will eat some berries but they're they're almost totally insect eaters that's why they have to migrate that's how and most of them do go to the tropics uh, in the winter months some over winter along the Gulf Coast uh, and most of them have one to two broods a year so uh, those are things that are, are they all have in, co in common they're very very awkward on the ground they're, they're leg positioning and everything but they are built for flight this is a female uh, uh, purple martin, so they, they're sexually dimorphic. You can really tell the, the females from the males, and a lot of the swallows are sexually dimorphic. Not all of them, but some, most of them are. So purple martin is the first swallow that we talk about. Now the next swallow that come, uh, arrives here, and they're being seen now, especially in southern Missouri, is the tree swallow. And this is a gorgeous bird. This bird, uh, uh, hopefully you can make this out, um, the blue-green iridescence of its back. This is a, a male. Females tend to be a little duller this, and sometimes they're even, uh, they have drab females, which are a, almost a black color. Um, but uh, there are females that are this bright as well. And tree swallows get their name, of course, because they typically nest in hollowed uh, cavities in trees. And we see them a lot around lakes. It's especially if lake, the lakes have dead standing timber in them, um, but they also will nest in nest boxes. They also hunt over grasslands, and so they'll nest in grasslands. They are uh, cavity nesters, um, and their requirements are basically the same as bluebirds. And so sometimes uh, there is controversy over a bluebird nest box between tree swallows and bluebirds. And the solution they have found for that in a lot of areas is by placing two boxes uh, fairly close together in that open suitable habitat for both bluebirds and tree swallows. My brother lived in Kentucky uh, a few years back and he, he had a tree swallow nest at one end of his yard and a bluebird nest at the other end of the yard. They got along just fine because they don't ne compete for the same food sources. You know, Bluebirds are very different hunters than swallows are. Swallows are aerialists and they're catching those, their insects out of the air. Bluebirds drop to the ground, pick up their bugs off the ground. So the two don't compete, but they do compete for nest sites. So if you have a situation where you have tree swallows and bluebirds, you can, that's the one time we, you talk about the exception of putting two bluebird boxes too close together uh, because the males will fight over time. But if you've got a tree swallow in one and a bluebird in the other, that works out really well. Now, some tree swallow boxes, um, 
kind of a classic design is more of the the slot here rather than just a hole. Um, this is a kind of a classic uh, tree swallow box, but they will nest in just regular bluebird boxes. I've seen it done, do it many, many times. So um, the tree swallows are just arriving. I think I've got another picture in here. Yeah, this is one up on a power line that again you see that beautiful blue green iridescence on their back and the other thing about them whenever you're trying the swallows are so fast and so maneuverable when you're bird watching trying to get make them out sometimes can be very difficult because they're zipping and zing all over not only does it have this beautiful blue green back but it has a stark white belly and none of the the other swallows we're going to talk about have that from bill to t the tail under tail covers all being stark white so that's a really good indication of a tree swallow another thing you're going to hear me talk about swallows is their tails uh, being square tails versus being fork tails i mean long fork so that we're going to talk about that as we go here but tree swallows the stark white contrast belly to the the back um, and they a lot of times like i said we see them over water just zipping around but they didn't you'll see them over grasslands as well so but tree swallows are coming in right now if i were go out up Smithfield Lake right now I'd, I bet you I would see tree swallows today so um, that is an, the, the second swallow of the group now probably the most famous of the tr what we would you know uh, with the name swallow would be the barn swallow this is the one that we see that's really well known because of how urban it has become. The tree swallows are uh, famous for nesting on your front porches, and we're going to talk about that. And it's not always very popular. But the barn, the name barn, of course, is that they, they nest in old structures, and they have a really unique way they nest. But, but visually and identifying-wise, they are a beautiful blue on their back, and they have this creamy color uh, breast and belly, uh, rusty throats, but they have that long fork tail. That, that, that is where the swallowtail name comes from, is from this bird. The, the, and they zip around, they're master flyers, and they're, <laughs> if you mow your grass, and, and you, if you mow in really open areas and you have big yards, you almost always, when you're mowing, have these guys swooping behind you, picking up the bugs that are being disturbed by your mower and being picked up, and that's, they're very famous for that. But their nest, and they're pretty ingenious, but they're not very popular. For a lot with a lot of people they build these half cup nest and boy their saliva mixed with mud it sets up like concrete very very hard but they like to position them underneath cover which of course porches provide this for them up near the the, the ceiling so it's harder for any predator to get in for their babies and so black snakes are their major enemies um and even raccoons can climb up and get into their bodies so they this is a, a defense mechanism but what most people don't like is that of course on your front porch the babies whenever they're they're growing they'll turn their rear ends and squirt their feces out and then it'll hit your wall or your door or your, your steps and they're very messy and a lot of people don't like that unfortunately i mean you know if you if you want to discourage them you can't do anything to destroy the eggs or the babies once they've gotten to that point you have to let them finish their nesting but while they're building their nest you can discourage them you can actually uh, try to run them off and i've had people spray the water hose at them to, you know you're not hurting them you're just trying to encourage them to move on and i've had people repeatedly break down that nest once they when they start it but boy they can build them awful fast so but the whole process is about a month from the time they lay their eggs to the time the babies leave so uh you know and then get out the power washer because they're great birds they're actually considered one of the most beneficial birds in north america with a number of insects that they eat um and i always you know say if you don't like bees don't like getting stung by a bee or wasp they're very good at eating those and, and eat a lot of harmful insects so barn swallows are among the uh, like i said the most important birds that we have just a quick shot of a baby this is a, a very fledgling barn swallow, really cute. Um, and then the bird that looks a lot like them, and people will get confused, is the cliff swallow. The cliff swallow superficially looks like that barn swallow. It's the same color of blue on its back, but if you notice, the belly is more white, not a crisp, clean white like that tree swallow, but it is white on the belly, still has that, that rufous throat, but the key to them, I call them 
tan rumps. When we're looking out at swallows flying around, when they bank, and they, uh, they, you can see on, the, on their back, at their, at their rump, down at the end, it has a kind of a glow uh, of a tan color. And I have got a, oh, here's a, this is what their nest look like. But down here, I you know, you can't hardly see it, but there's tan at that rump and their square tail. So they don't have the long fork tail that the barn swallow that they look most alike. They have the short squared tail, but they have that tan rump and that is certainly a giveaway. They do nest in colonies. They build under overpasses, under bridges and even culverts out in the country even under big big structures and they build these bottle nests and there's clusters of them there could be hundreds of them in their colonies and uh, again another bird that eats tons of really uh, in in insects that could be harmful to us so a very very important colony there all right one and, and one of the most numerous of all the um, the swallows the one i started out with is the northern rough wing swallow now when we have the back door open here in the spring on these nice warm days, Ruth and I know when the barn, when the rough wing swallows arrive because they make a real unique, we call it mouth tooting sound. They go <coughs> kind of sound. And we know they're out there. We hear them flying around. They nest in rock crevices and they always check out the retaining wall back here between us and Lowe's. And there's lots of rock crevices in there. And they, I've never seen them nest in there. They're too shallow, but they always seem to want to check that out and see if they can lay eggs in there. But they nest in these rocky crevices like that mostly. I've seen them nest in a retaining wall in our neighborhood, at our swimming pool, and that, that nest was only about six inches off the ground. But I saw them, they were going in, there was a rock crevice, an opening in it where they could get back in there and lay their eggs, and they nested that close to the ground. But they, you know, naturally, you know, the, 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 the theme here, these birds are cavity nesters. They nest inside of structures like that. So um, they're, they're overall brown, but Instead of that nice, clean, white chest that we saw on the tree swallow, we said that they have a dirty chest. It's brown, a lighter brown, um, and it is kind of blo a, a smudgy looking, I think. And let's see. Oh, oh, wrong one. Where's that one I started out with? Oh, this guy up on the power line. That is a nice rough wing swallow. Now, rough wing swallows are our longest winged swallow. They have long, narrow wings. Um, if you get good at identifying them, the different ones all together, you'll notice that these guys have really long wings compared to the other ones. So, beautiful bird. We had, they're actually fairly numerous in the area uh, when they're nesting. And you'll see them again over grasslands, but most of the time over water. You see them over water. Um, and then our, our, the last one that actually nests in our area, it's kind of a unique one. And I had to get a picture off the internet, and here's a, a credit for him, is uh, the bank swallow. The bank swallow looks a lot like the brownish back color to that rough wing. But notice this dark chest band across there. The rough wing doesn't have that. The bank swallow does. Now, this is actually our smallest swallow. They are they're very small. And if you go to the old world, if you go to England, they'll call this a common sand martin. And the reason they call them sand martins is because they make cavities and or they use cav old cavities in sand banks. Uh, up at Los Bluffs National Wildlife Refuge, there famously was a cut bank where they put in the road, was exposed that Los uh, uh, sand there, and there used to be a nesting colony of these birds there. Um, I, have, I think they've moved on, but they, they did have many holes in that sand bank, and they, they nest back in there, so they're really cool. Um, and you see them flying over the water. You talk about some memories of swallows, and a lot of times when you go to, to Los Bluffs, and uh, whenever the, the swallows are migrating in the fall or in the early spring, be thousands upon thousands of swallows out there uh, picking up insects over the top of the vegetation and the top of the water. Just they're everywhere. So that's a great place to see lots of different swallows at one time. Now the one swallow that I got in here for a quick one is we don't have them here, but they're the I call I think of them as the high altitude swallow, uh, just because when I see them, they're I'm usually in Colorado or in, out in uh, the mountains where they. Uh, but they nest down in the lowlands too, so not necessarily a high altitude swallow. This is a violet green. 
swallow. I don't know how well that picks up the beautiful color, the green in their back, and also they have a kind of a, a purplish violet wings. Um, but they, they're, they're the really more of a woodland swallow, which is really unusual among our swallows. Ours are, you know, much more water area based and, and grassland based, but these guys nest in mixed uh, forest and pine, pine for, really open forest where they can zip around. And they'll nest up to like 11,000 feet, which is, you know, up there in elevation. So the violet green swallow, a beautiful one that unfortunately here in Missouri, we don't ever get to see. So the swallows, a great group of birds, super beneficial group of birds. That was a great idea for a program. I appreciate that suggestion. We'll do more family groups of birds in the future. I've been, I've been trying to come up with some more. So we'll get to that. Thanks for the, uh, the watching us. Give us a like, give us a share. If you're on YouTube, please subscribe. Until then, we'll come back and we'll talk birds.